Okay, here we are. Hopefully this isn't too cold. Let's just come home from the store. Can't believe how much this freezes your hands to mix it. Um, we've got six and a half pounds here. I'm uh, not six and a half. Six and a, six and a fourth. Get it open. Now. Yeah, oh, thank you, because you were in my way. Okay, I haven't washed my hands already. Uh, maybe about, you know, what? 20 seconds into the video before I had to wash them? Hey, we're good. Anyway, <clears throat> this is what we use to stuff cabbage with when we make cabbage rolls. It's what we use to stuff peppers with when we make the stuffed green peppers. And usually, you know, mom would make a layer, a big layer, like a big roaster full, like a single layer of the stuffed peppers or the stuffed cabbage, cabbage rolls. And then she would just make some plain meatballs on top. But we have, you know, six and a fourth pounds of ground beef here, ground chuck, Putting some pepper on it. Pepper, pepper, pepper. Gonna give it some salt. Kinda salt each little hunk. We use minced onion. You can use fresh onion, certainly. <coughs> mm, excuse me. Okay. We ain't gonna try that. I fixed rice a little earlier. I fixed a pot full because I wanted, uh, I want to have some stir fry. Oh, I wasn't sure how much green chuck, a green chuck, <laughs> ground chuck we'd get. It is, like I said, it's been sitting here a while. You know what? So, you know, it's in big old clumps. Doesn't matter to me. Let's see. That looks pretty good right there. Put a little more in it. I must have put an extra cup of rice in because, like, yeah, I ran out of water soon and I ran out of the other stuff soon. Of course, I guess if I get it too ricey, I can add some more ground chalk because I have more at the moment. <clears throat> you know, and I'm thinking a little more soldings for the rice. A little more pepperings for the rice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm tempted. I love shaking spices around, and it's just, it's fun. I love messing with them, love working with them. But I'm thinking this recipe of mom's bed doesn't need me to go shaking. Um, wow, the rice is warm and the burger is cold. But you just dig in there and get her mixing. You know what? This is our recipe. This is how we do it. Don't add anything else to it. Now, uh, when we put it in to bake, or I am actually going to put this in jars to can it up. We do ours with, um, we make a big roaster full, and we use... Um, a large can, a 46 ounce can of tomato juice. And you know, sometimes to get things going a little faster, Mom will put it in a saucepan on the stove. She's got a three quart saucepan, so that fits in there nicely. But we put a little sugar in with the tomato juice. Sometimes when we use the green pepper, Especially, you know, for the kids that don't like it. <clears throat> um, we'll put them on and parboil them, parboil them just, you know, a couple minutes. But, um, like, just in water with a little bit of sugar in it to kind of take out the bitterness of them. <clears throat> you do put... Hmm. We do. They might be out again. 
filled up twice today. They're thirsty dogs. Of course, I think when they get excited too, especially when there's something good in their bowl, they knock it around and get hyper and spill it all over the floor. This is a pretty good ratio. Maybe hold a little more rice. But we put a little, a little sugar in it. That's not sweet. And we normally add a little bit more sugar. Dad never did. <clears throat> And, you know, Mom kind of got away from it over the years, but my sister always put a little bit more sugar in the bowl. Mom always ate hers on a plate, too, so did Dad. She would serve them that way, but I'd get up and go get me a bowl, because I wanted to scoop up the tomato juice and, you know, have extra on mine. Mine is almost like a stuffed pepper soup stuffed cabbage soup. Yep. You know what? Have more. Whew, this is so cold. So cold my hand is frozen. Dang gone. I don't know what dang gone is, but you know. Okay. I am with my slimy hand. Ah! Now I'm bumping my clean utensils. Doing swell. And drop some on the counter. Isn't that special? Oh well, I just wiped it up. So we should be good. Oh. I'll tell you right now. My frozen hand is thinking, yep, let's get back in that warm rice. Okay. Yeah, I did just wipe my counter. So, yeah, I'm getting the glob that I spilled. Dad gone. I pick it up and drop it. Anyway, this is basmati rice, too. We just normally use regular white. Almost every time. But, it's, you know, pretty much it is a regular white. Anyway, you know, you can you can put this whatever ratio meat to rice that you want. And sometimes I get a little bit blessed, but you know, they they hold better. They hold together better if you don't have ridiculous amount of rice in it. But I don't care if mine ends up messy or not. Like the rice is good for you, you know, especially when compared to the hamburger. It's ground chuck, people. It's ground chuck, it's ground chuck, it's ground chuck. Dang, and it's taken a while to mix it, too. What are we at? Eight minutes? Man, seems like it's been longer than that. And that is a dog in the bedroom. Looks like she's wagging her tail against the door. But, you know, we don't want the doggies out around. Okay, I'm about done here. I think that's pretty good. I'll take my clean hand, give one last shake, and another one. Pepper, pepper, pepper. You ever get pepper? Now this one's not really one of them. It just doesn't seem to want to come out. But you ever get pepper and it seems like, you know, the container they put it in, the, the pepper is ground up. It's like larger than the holes to dump it out through and it kind of doesn't go anywhere. Anyway, oh, bump a camera too. I'm gonna 
work this down in. No, and the, the bell peppers, you know, we cut them in half, like from top to bottom. So we just, you know, split it vertically down the center and make two halves instead of one whole one like most people do. Get off my finger. Okay, my hand is frozen. That is mixed up good enough for me. Oh my gosh, it's just amazing how good this smells. I mean, I don't find raw meat good smelling, except when I'm making these, which is mom's recipe, and when I'm making mom's meatloaf, which obviously is her recipe. Uh, hers and grandma's anyway, I know grandma. <laughs> Made these two anyway. I've got a half gallon jar here. And that's what we do. We, um, well, I want them a little bigger, don't I? I don't know. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm small enough to fit in here nicely. But when they cook down, I don't want them to shrink white enough and... Hello! Okay, maybe a little smaller. To fit through the funnel nicely. But <clears throat> to can them, I just roll them up like I'm going to bake them. They do fine. They do well. You know, when you when you can them like this, now I will have tomato juice in there, but I I won't I only fill it about halfway up because the ground chuck, um, you know, it's going to come on. See, it's, it's going in raw, so it will have all of its liquid and fat and juices come out. And that one needs scooted over. And I, I don't have to have the funnel on here, but it's like, ugh, keeps it nice and clean. Okay, I've already messed it up, so I'm gonna leave it off. But these are lovely to have on the shelf. Now, like I said, we make them, we like them plain. I have only one head of cabbage in here, so I might just simply chop up some cabbage and add it in with one. And then again, I don't know because I really want to make um, vegetable soup. Again, mom's recipe. Get down there. Oh, dang, I was counting them. Yes, can't count and talk at the same time. One, two, three. I do have six in there, don't I? And that's special. Um, to do them like this, to just have the meatballs, um, and we don't really have something else with it, and this, this is really good with a baked potato and some green beans if you want, or it's good, you know, just like it is. Like I said, though, we, we just kind of tend to eat more of this, so... You know, to make one jar do a meal. I want to make them. I'm used to making them bigger. So we make them bigger when we do this. Now. And I don't want to. I don't want it to be disgusting. But anyway, I'm going to finish up this jar. And then I will pour, you know, either tomato juice, like halfway up the jar. See, it will make its own juices out of the raw meat. 
and add to the jar and when I open it to fix it, you know, if I want it more tomatoey, you know, I can add, it just depends on how much I want. I can add, you know, like a small can of tomato sauce. Or, you know, tomato paste even with a little bit of water. I'm going to put one more meatball in there. And I don't know how many I put in now again because I quit counting and start talking again. And maybe, maybe I can count it up before I do it. You know what? I'm going to put one more right there. But doing it in the half gallon jars, you know, that'll be another meal. Like I said, you know, sometimes I cut chunks of green pepper or just, I, I can, um, oh, that'll make it kind of full, won't it? Okay, you know what? We're going with that. I'm going to wash my hands. But sometimes, you know, I just make green peppers or cabbage rolls and, you know, put them in the jar. That's lovely, too. You can just add some chopped to the same flavoring the deconstructed ones, you know. Anyway, this is you know, if you wanted to, especially a smaller jar, that's a lot of meat for soup. But, um, you know, you can can this in pints or quarts, obviously. Um, you can open it up and just, you know, dump it in your pan. That's your meat for your vegetable soup. That is really good, too. But, um, you know, all we're going to do with this is it's ready. We'll want to put um, where'd my rag go? My hand is all kinds of itchy. I don't know why. That's a new one. Anyway, I'm going to wipe this off. And yes, this will be scrubbed well later. As soon as I get done, get these on the stove. This dish rag will go in a hot bath. It will indeed. I don't like that stuff on there. And actually, I'm out of paper towels, or I would be, I wouldn't be using my dishcloth at all. And I'm out of white distilled vinegar. All of these things sadden me. Yes, yes, yes. Because I need the good stuff. But anyway, got a little bit of actually toilet paper. Got some vinegar on it. Hopefully it's charming so we don't leave behind a trail. Nah, it's looking good. It's looking really good. Anyway. I will put the funnel on. Actually, I will clean it again too, but I'll put the funnel on and add some juice. See, that's that's a meal full for sure. <clears throat> oh, we're a family of four. And sometimes my mom comes over. So, you know, there are several meatballs in here and they will cook up. But um, we will add the tomato juice to pretty much exactly half and let the rest just be, you know, the what comes out of the meat. I may do it just a hair under half because I normally, you know, normally when you can raw meat, you don't add any liquid. <clears throat> but, um, you know, I will, I will add some because I want them cooked in the tomato juice. And I will add some sugar. I will dump out the tomato juice and put some sugar in it and sweeten it maybe maybe heat it just a little but I'll pour it over this and I'm going to can four half gallons of this today if that holds out <clears throat> and I think that's all I've got to say at the moment but you got to try it you know you can you can do the plain ones and you know you can eat it just like this, like we do. Normally, we don't have anything with it but crackers. Uh, or sometimes they'll have coleslaw. <laughs> um, but this would be nice with baked potatoes and green beans. Or it would be nice just plain by itself in a bowl with crackers. Yum, ola. 
Um, and you can add green pepper or you can add cabbage. You know, if you want to have a green pepper or stuffed pepper or, you know, cabbage roll. It swings around any which way. You stuff whatever you want in that jar and can it up. And it'll be awesome. And we're going to go for now. And I'm going to load up another jar. Praise God for whom all blessings flow. Ciao for now. We're making chow for later.